And we're live, guys. Uh, Tom Owens, MMA Fight Pass. We're back again. <clears throat> Today I'm in Tulare, California. I'm at the Tulare Athletic Boxing Club. Uh, I want to welcome you guys into the club and uh, introduce you to Richard Torres Jr., Richard Torres Sr., and Aldo Rodriguez. Yes, correct. How you guys doing today? Good. Good. Mm -hmm. good. Awesome. Thank you for inviting us in uh, today. Normally, guys, we normally we go to either jujitsu ju gyms or uh, or mixed martial art gyms or kickboxing gyms, but we're trying to get the podcast with every type of martial art, uh, kicking, punching, wrestling, everything. So today we're going to examine some boxing. Uh, Guys, uh, I follow you on Facebook. Today's my first day meeting you guys personally. It's it's an honor, a true honor to meet you, sir. I've heard a lot about you, and uh, I just I, I hear so much about you, and I watch you do, doing the boxing and traveling all around the world. Tell us a little bit about your boxing career, bro, and, and what's going on with you right now. Oh uh, yeah, so uh, right now I am a team captain of USA Boxing. I am uh, number one in the nation. I've been number one in the nation for the past seven years now. Uh, I've gone to Junior Worlds, I've gone to Youth Worlds, I've been to Elite Worlds, I uh, have been to 11 different countries through boxing, and uh, right now I'm on the USA Olympic team, and our team as a whole is trying to qualify in Argentina uh, in March. You say uh, your team is, a, so qualifying for the Olympics, what does that take? Because uh, I know just going as far as you've went already, it's got to be pretty tough to get, you know, right. for the average guy to get to that level. What does your team have to do to make it into the Olympics? Can the whole team do it, or so or the whole doing it? the whole team can do it, but it, it's uh, you qualify individually. So uh, when we're in Argentina, it's basically a continental championships. They have one of those every two years, and so this one will just happen to be an Olympic qualifier. Uh, how we qualify is you just place within the top three or five. Um, each each continent or. Uh, qualifying area, the IOC, the Olympic, International Olympic Committee, they dictate uh, how many positions each weight class in each continent gets. Uh, us, the America continent, we get uh, three spots for the super heavyweight division. Wow, and what weight are you, do you, do you super fight at? Heavyweight. Super heavyweight? Yeah, so and uh, what what weight is that for us? We don't, for MMA it's a little bit different. What is it for boxing? It's 201 plus, so anything over 201 mm -hmm. pounds is, is my weight class. 201 plus, is there... Does it no just cap. keep going up? Yeah, I fought a guy uh, about 370 one time. Oh, really? It goes yeah. it goes up that high? Yeah, yep. there's no cap. Oh, wow. No cap. Because in MMA, doesn't it stop at like 265 or something like that? They have to cut down to 265. Mm -hmm. so. uh, man, that's something else, dude. So you just you came back from Bulgaria right now? Yeah. And what, what was that, the Pan Am Games? No, the uh, Bulgaria was the Stranger Tournament. It's the third largest tournament in the world. Uh, I fought a guy from India my first night. I won that fight. And I had some complications with my shoulder, so I, 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 uh, my coaches took me out of that tournament. But, um, yeah, I've been to the Pan American Games. I took a bronze over there. That was in Lima, Peru. In Lima, Peru? Mm -hmm. So you're traveling all over the world, man. What's the experience like? Uh, <clears throat> you're a young man. How old are you? I'm 20. 20 years old, and you're already traveling all, all over the world. That's something else. Yeah, I've been to 11 different countries, and it's been amazing. I mean, uh, that's one of the best things I like about boxing. I, I wouldn't have been able to get out of Central Valley if it weren't for boxing. So what the sport's given me is truly, truly a blessing. That's something else. You guys are born and raised here in the Central Valley? Myself and my boy here, Aldo, was born. Where are you born? I was born in Reno, Nevada. In Reno, Nevada? Yeah, yeah I grew up in uh, Nevada, Reno and Vegas. And what brought you over here? Uh... Just it was time to leave Vegas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> time to leave Vegas. Yeah. yeah. So you found yourself here in the Central Valley. Yeah. Well, I met my uh, my wife uh, out there, and then she had a sister out here, and uh, she convinced us to move out here. So we moved out here. Awesome. So before we get into your story, uh, Richard, your father, um, I've. When it was, uh, my <clears throat> MMA career and, and when I taught MMA and Jiu-Jitsu and stuff, we would have different boxers come in and I was always having uh, like guys like Hector Alatori and mm -hmm. just diff different kids that have trained with you would come into our gym um, when UFC and MMA started getting big and like people were starting to, you know, to adventure out and look at the Jiu-Jitsu and things like mm -hmm. that here in the area. So we would get like wrestlers and would come in and we'd get different boxers and things like that and I would always hear your name. And, uh, I, you know, I, when, whenever a boxer would come in, I would try to pick up whatever I could. And, you know what I mean? I would show them jujitsu, mm -hmm. and I would try to learn a little something from them because I was fighting in the cage. Yeah. So your name always popped up. And then older people that I knew, like uh, my stepdad and my real father and old, older gentlemen, they I was always hearing your name, but I had never met you in person. Mm -hmm. I saw you out there and taught you with Hector yep. in his corner and stuff. 
but you know, it's, yeah. it's now now I've met you. It's an honor to meet you. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Are, how did you get a start in boxing? Well, my dad. It all started with my dad. My dad started boxing in 1945. I'm sorry, that back. He started. He had to start his club in 1945. A little prior to that, he had an uncle that went into the military, and when his uncle came back out, he was boxing. My dad's kind of adventurous. He liked the wild side a little bit. And he says, hey, I want to learn how to box. And my uncle put him down. I said, hey, you don't want to box. Yeah, you want to box? Put the gloves on. My, like I said, my, my dad's probably about 14. Uh, his uncle's 18. And they put a whooping on him. They put a one point on my dad. And my dad's like, okay. Had a little determination out that part. And, and started to try to start boxing. Started boxing. So he started the club just to get some more training. Uh, that went on for... For many, many years, he joined the military, shut down the club for a little bit, but came back and started the club up again. The Tulare PD uh, came out and, and had a, a couple of kids that were kind of rough. One of them was Russell Pope. Russell Pope went to the uh, uh, Olympic trials, uh, same year with Sugar Ray Leonard and, and them. And uh, so we just, we were out on the farm. I grew up on the farm. Nothing else to do on the farm except kind of hang out and watch our bills, do what they needed to do. I just started joining in. Dad asked me, hey, you want a box? I didn't know what that really meant. And he put me in the ring, and I, I didn't like getting hit, i can tell you that much. But he said, let's go to town. And we went to town and got another gym to spar, and we stopped at McDonald's. I was hooked. <laughs> <laughs> got me off the farm. I got to go no. see the town. So the McDonald's thing. McDonald's got me off <laughs> yeah. the farm, man. So I was like, I, I can do this. You know, take a little punch every now and in the yeah. face and started boxing. So I started probably when I was seven. Uh, first competition when I was eight. And then... Uh, just kept on going. I got to be ranked in, in three uh, weight classes in the United States. I was ranked in two weight classes in the world. And I went to Olympic trials in 1984. I uh, went to world championships, you know, and decided to give it up after a while. And, you know, just wasn't taking me where I wanted to go. And finished college, became a teacher. Now I'm an administrator, uh, assistant principal at Tech Prep High School. And I was lucky enough, my wife was allowed me to put my boy into boxing, and it's been history ever since. Man, uh, so that back then, that was back when the McDonald's fries were good. Oh, man. <laughs> that was what, the real yeah. deal back then. <laughs> man, that's that's really something else, man, it, getting off the farm and going out, and that got you into it. Yeah, when I first did my first boxing class and got hit the first time, I know what you're saying. I was like, I'll stick with jujitsu. You yeah. know what I mean? We're, we're, we're not hitting each other. But uh, yeah. and what about you, Aldo? Uh, what got you into boxing? Uh, <clears throat> really, just growing up watching the fights, you know, watching the boxers get down in the ring, and, and when I wanted to actually participate was when I saw Hector Camacho's uh, face kind of beat up after the Chavez fight. I was yes. like, yeah, I want to do that. I want to try to do that. That's so. back in the, those days. Yeah. So, yeah, so I've been. Were, was that one of your favorite fighters? Uh, Chavez, yeah, yeah, one of them, Johnny Tapia, Tyson. Uh, growing up, you know. And what about you guys? Did you, did you, or you, sir, did you have a favorite guy, like a guy you looked up to when you were coming? You know what? I, I like his style. It's nasty. I like Joe, Joe uh, Frazier. Joe Frazier was Joe awesome. Frazier, huh? uh, Roberto Duran, Joe Frazier. You know, anybody gets in the ring deserves the respect, but I just like their style yeah. a little more than, than usual. Um, Duran, Frazier, Tony Ayala was an old-time fighter. Uh, he got in trouble with the law, but he could fight his butt off, man. Uh, Those are usually the guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. You guys, how's the sound over there? You want to break that board out just in case? Okay. So, let's get into your experience a little, or the the future, what the future holds for you here. Um, you had these fights over there in Europe that got that got you to a certain point. Now you're getting ready to go with the Olympic team. I mean, what's what's the feeling like, man? Because uh, I remember just fighting local, how nervous and stuff I was. By now, you're probably pretty used to it, or what? Yeah, I mean, at first, you're always kind of nervous. I remember my first time going to Junior World Championships uh, back in 2015. Oh, I was I was shaking at the knees, you know. Uh, it's just time and time again, getting back in the ring, the scene under the lights, uh, when those HD cameras get in your face. Oh, jeez, those big ones? Yeah, those big ones, they get in the ring, and they're all, they're all right next to you, your yeah. coaches. I remember last year in Bulgaria, I was in the finals against Bulgaria, and uh, the crowd was so loud I couldn't hear my own corner. You know? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it was insane. Uh, but I mean, if you after those experiences, keeping them going and uh, proving yourself, proving to yourself that you can actually do it, it helps out a lot. Dude, I'll bet, man. That's crazy. When, when you 
like when the fight's over, I remember when I went out, when I walked out to one of my first fights, like I did, it was the same thing. I And it was just out here in the moor. Mm -hmm. But uh, I could, it, everything was blocked out. It seemed like when I walked out, it was like, kind of like tunnel vision right. when I went out there. And then the, you hear him call your name and everything. And next thing you know, you're fighting some dude in front of thousands of people. Oh, yeah. um, how old were you when you first had your good fight? You know what I mean? In front of a good crowd like that. So growing up uh, in the amateur, you know, the amateur route, you get a, you get these tournaments where there'll be a lot of people, but they won't really watch everybody's fight. There'll be four rings. Uh, I'd say the first time people really started to kind of take notice was uh, probably Junior Olympics. When my uh, Junior Olympics, yeah, I, uh, that was when people I finally made enough of a name for myself for other states and other boxing shows. Would be like, oh, that's Richard Torres. We should go watch him. He's kind of a good fighter, you know, or it'll be a good fight at least. And so um, that's when people start packing around, people start yelling and cheering, and that was always a good time. But the first time, I, there's thousands of people, that'd probably be Russia. That'd probably be my first Whoa. time going overseas. In Russia? Yeah, I've been to Russia three times. Uh, World Championships, just loved to be in Russia, apparently. But um, yeah, St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, they're in a big old coliseum. And, uh, St. Petersburg, that's one of the, the spots right there, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Where, where the people are, they into it over there? Yeah, yeah. oh, man. Very they're, much so. And yeah. they're tough. Yeah. Russians are tough. Yep. Oh, yeah. Just that whole 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 culture, I mean, they love the fights. Yep. And it's funny because you talk about the big fight, you know, I remember seeing them come out, they had them on the big screen, they had the music, they had streamers, they had flash, lights flashing, and I remember looking at him in his face like, oh, hell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you can yeah, see that. Yeah, what were you thinking, man? I'm thinking, you know, it's like, you know, you, when you get to that big platform, that big stage, you're always thinking, okay, that's the nerves take the most out of you, you know? You're sitting there, you're watching everybody, kind of, and, and I can just see in his eyes, like, oh, shit, man, it's getting to him. You know, I, I can tell. Because, yeah, he was smiling, he was in that, but you could just, I could just get that feeling, you know? Uh, we're almost like like same person at times. I could I could sense yeah, him. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, when he hurts, when he when he's bleeding, whatever it may be, I, I can feel that almost time, but like, oh. Is there a know. sense like that? Yeah. I, you know, uh, I mean, it's your son. How many how many children do you have? I have a daughter. I have a daughter. daughter yeah, and, and a boy. And you know, same thing. And stuff. You know, I, I'm kind of perceptive on part and stuff. I'm a daughter. I can tell the same thing. But with this one, I can. I you know, ever since he was little, and and I've been in the ring with him, I can tell the way he walks. He, when he's hurting, when he's tired, when he's when he's angry with me, when he's frustrated, I, I can just see it in his face. I can tell. You know, there's been times when he's asked me. You could tell I was a little anxious there. Yeah, I could tell. And so, you know, we do certain things to, to relax himself. But, you know, when he's in the ring and, and they say uh, it doesn't bother you for him to get hit, hell yeah, it bothers me. Oh, you know? I can't imagine. You know, I, I can't I'd rather imagine. be one getting hit myself, you know, than see right. him get hit sometimes. And But it's the way it works. This game we, we chose. You got to take us, some huh? hits. Yeah, you got to take some hits. You're going to yeah. give something and get some back. Uh, <clears throat> when, you, when you're over there, like, when the fight ends, you go, you go through this whole – you know the fight, and I'm sure you've won. You've won. You, of course, you've won plenty of them, but you've all, you've definitely had to have lost some too. Yeah. Um, I know it's it's a great feeling when you win, and I I like always ask fighters this because you know the winning is what you want to win, mm -hmm. and for your whole family's out there watching, the whole crowd's out there. But some of the best uh, lessons come off of a loss. Have mm -hmm. you? Was there any fights in particular where you it didn't turn out your way, but you came out of that fight and and went back to the drawing board and actually uh, got really really got better from like is there is there any that stand out yeah so i'm a uh, i'm 135 and 9 is my record right now and uh 135 and 9 mm -hmm. and uh it's <laughs> a lot of fights man oh uh, yeah there's a lot of that's a lot of time in the ring mm -hmm. yeah a lot of time in the gym yeah <laughs> more time okay yeah more time in the gym talk about that dude cuz that working with, with us we work with MMA fighters and we do a lot of jiu jitsu camps and uh that time in the gym, like guys want to compete and, and all that, that time in the gym is super important, man. Mm -hmm. And Very. and guys, too, like that are willing to do time even not just inside the gym but outside the gym and uh, with road work and things like that. Do you do you, do you see it with a lot of guys? or, or I mean, what percentage <clears throat> of guys like have that where they'll come into the gym, do everything you want, and then go outside and do the stuff that, you know, on their own, running, biking, whatever it is. You know what I mean? To there, that, keep keep the camp going. There's <clears throat> levels to the boxing and stuff. Everybody wants to be a fighter. Everybody loves the idea of being a fighter, whether it be MMA, whatever it may be. They want to be a fighter. They like that that stigma behind it. You know, I'm a fighter. You know, people, oh, yeah. People Walk step out of the way. Chest yeah. out. People step out of the way when you come through, you know. Uh, 
but in order to become a fighter, you know, there's certain certain criteria you need to meet. One is, are you willing to pay the dues dues in the, in the gym? Monday through Thursday, Monday through you know, seven days a week, you're there doing something. You're always thinking about it, always dreaming about it, always eating about it. You get in there, okay? They they're paying the price. Day day workout. Next one is getting the ring. We get in the ring and you get somebody in there. And what happened is sometimes I got kids that are, are, are really you know they can fight. Another kind of oh, they you know they got a good desire, a good drive, but they're not really the fighting type. Yeah, they get in the ring and they get popped. Pow. Are they gonna come back the next day? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are they gonna come can back? Can you tell certain guys like uh, when you see when they when you see a nah. dude come in and take that that first hard hit? Uh, he hasn't. Can, can you t like see it in a guy's eyes when, when 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 they light up off of that or when they you they go? You know what? That's not for me. Er Everybody, from what I had my experience is, everybody who, who's a fighter, a good fighter, has something to prove. Whether it be that they're manly enough, whether it be that you know, they're angry at life, whatever, they have something to prove. And so, sometimes I see fighters come in, and man, they get pow, and I'm looking at myself, they're not coming back. They got nailed, you know? Monday, two days, three days a week, a month come, mm -hmm. they come back walking to the gym. You're back, huh? Yeah. And so they had to get it right with themselves right. to make that decision, do it again. And they come back and they stick with it. Okay? First step, you're going to willing to pay the price in the gym. Day to day, grind. Second day is, can you take that first shot? Okay? Third step for me is, can you take that first loss? The that first, first lo loss. That first loss. Talk man. about that. First loss, man. Everything you ever put your heart into, your, your desire, your, your, your everything, you put your whole life into it and say, I'm going to be a fighter. And then somebody comes and they snatches that away from you. Or they, they teach you very quick. You're not as tough as you thought you were. Okay? Some people can't handle it. Some people want to live in that fallacy, that fantasy world that they're tough as they can be and stuff. They may, they'll take what they learn out in the street. They'll take it someplace else and stuff. But those who can handle those three things, take a first loss and come back, we're going to make, some, make something with them. You know, whether it be a champion, local champion, they're going to be a champion in and out of the ring because they're willing to put that into it. They have tenacity. That's a big one that you need to have in that kind of combat sport. The tenacity. That's crazy, man. I'm still getting over that many fights, dude. That is tremendous. <laughs> man. That's a lot of time in the ring, man. Yeah, it's, it's been since I was eight. So it's Since been, you were eight. It's been over there. Now, a lot of your fights, they, do a lot of your fights go the distance? Or do you have a lot of, like, a lot of knockouts or TKOs? I'd say, well, it started getting a lot more TKOs and knockouts uh, throughout. Started when I was about 15, 16. What, what's it like knocking a dude out? I mean, because you seem like a very, uh, right off the bat when I met you and your dad outside, you guys both seem, uh, you seem like Mike's type of people. You seem like you're pretty humble in your, in your respect for right off the bat, but you're serious about your thing. Uh, what, I mean, what is that feeling like, knocking a, knocking a man out? It's, it's, it's a really different feeling. I remember the first time I, it happened to me, I was in sparring, and uh, I, hit, I hit a guy, I fainted up, and I hit him with the left hand. And it's just like almost... Like, it, it, it just lets go. You can feel the other person just kind of let go. If you hit someone normally, they it's a hard him. punch. It'll. Uh, it's like you can feel bone. You know that that through the glove. It's almost. I like don't. A, I don't know. Well, <laughs> you hit someone. <laughs> if you hit someone cleanly, it's like a. It's like a, almost like a skin to skin contact. But when you knock them out, it it just goes through, and it's almost like you. It's, it's like, like it's like pushing through one of those little wrappers you get when you get your clothes done at the laundry. You can hit that, and you feel a little resistance, and you just kind of go through. Mm -hmm. oh, and then gives really just, That's an interesting take. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's called, like, and then there's a the crumble drop, and then there's like a like a fall down drop, and yes, yeah, that crumble drop. It'll just it just kind of goes through and it's down. How many, uh, like how much, how many hours do you think you have inside like the live fighting? If you have that many fights, I mean, have you ever like added it up? Or is this too much? Too much? Too That's much? about. I, I'm not math. It's, it's a nine lot. Nine minutes, 150 fights. It's a ton. Yeah, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. I'd say about uh, close to 1,300 minutes divided by 60. That's six, 60. Yeah, it's 65, 64, 62 hours maybe around. Damn. Yeah, so kids got some brains too. Hey, Valedictorium is cool. Hey, good for yeah, you, man. Good for yeah, you. Thank you. So, I mean, you're, you guys in your gym, um, guys, we were outside when we pulled up into the parking lot. Uh, my buddy behind the camera, you guys know Xavier Ortega, he's one of our podcast guys. 
he had came and trained here uh, at the building next yeah. door, which is a hand, it looks like a hand-built brick <laughs> building. It's Adobe. It's an Adobe building right there, mm. and that's where the first boxing ring is. We'll be back with an, with an episode of the Inside the Dojo here. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be back for that, and we'll get, you know, we'll, we'll come around and we'll check that out as well. It's a, it's a Tulare County Fire Station. It's one of the first county fire stations in the area and stuff. We took it over in 72 through a... Uh, John Conway and my dad were friends, and he kind of let us use it. So we leased the, the, the area. We have a soccer field back here. We have this building, and we have the other one next to us. That's cool, man. And how long did it take before you guys uh, worked your way up into this building? Right you know what? 72, we've probably been here for about seven years. What uh, happened was people throughout the community, boxing not for everybody, any kind of combative sports not for everybody so you see you no. go out there and it's not like high school and 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 it's hey support this support that people aren't willing as as much to say write a check for that okay because they you know they said how successful are you we're very successful in the fact that we keep the kids off the street we give them a place to hang out That's what we I'm give, about we give right them there. confidence you know that they don't have to be running the street with their buddies and stuff they can tell their buddies no i don't want to do that all those things so it takes confidence so it took us a while before people started saying, we like what you're doing and everything. The Noon Rotary and Tulare decided, you know what? We like what you guys do over there. We want to come support you. We want to help you build a new gym. And they came through through with this in about seven years ago. Did did anybody help you guys out with the funding? Oh, yeah. The Noon Rotary. The Noon Rotary, Rotary, Rotary yeah. you did? They threw Noon, the money? Yeah, they threw money. We had raised a little money ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, working through a lot of the paperwork and everything. But uh, they, they supported wholeheartedly. And we got the gym, and it's growing and doing great that's awesome man and that, that that's one thing that we really would like to support we love seeing the people helping the kids out off the street um, <clears throat> right now in today's world you it's so crazy with the social media you see all these crazy diets and uh, a keto diet and there's a carnivore diet and there's all these different things and these all these i mean we follow a little bit of all the the, the fighting sports boxing kickboxing muay thai mma all that there's all these different diets uh, when it comes to nutrition, what do you, how do you feel about nutrition? Nutrition is what, what, what type of stuff? Do you, get? <clears throat> you know what? You got to eat healthy. You got to eat the right foods, right nutrients, and all those things, depending on your weight class. You know, uh, this guy is super heavyweight. I, I remember dropping weight when I was boxing. It made boxing very unenjoyable. You know, at boxing was fun, and I can eat. And then once you start dropping weight and drying out, so when he was younger, he says, let's just see where you grow, how you grow. And so, so we just kept on feeding him and, and you know, make sure he didn't get too heavy and random and things like that. So he's super weight, heavyweight. He eats basically whatever he wants. That's what I was going to say. You can, it's all energy, right? It's all energy. But you, but you stay away from the junk food, of course. Yeah. I and, mean, are, do you go for like a lot of uh, like carbs and pasta and things like that? You know, uh, it, it, that's the, the energy for the body, you know, mm -hmm. carbs and pasta. Carbs and pasta, but you still do the protein. You got to do the protein. What about stuff. vegetables and things like, like salads? You got to do that. You, you know, oh, you been on that? Oh, you got to. You got to. Myself eating them. Oh, yeah, I'm, you're gonna have, I'm, you're gonna find I'm a hard horrible. time. I'm yeah, you have a hard time finding me eating a, a salad. But you know, I'll I'll, right. I'll shove it down there and down and stuff. But with everybody else, hey, you know, you got to eat balanceable, balanced meal, fruits, vegetables, grain, or all that stuff. You know, uh, for a healthy diet. And over in the Olympic Training Center, uh, it's a, like a buffet style cafe. And, oh, okay, uh, yeah. And we have nutritionists over there, too. And Do they try to work with a guy like you, that's super heavyweight? Oh, yeah, the, they're really good. We have uh, our nutritionist, Rob. Rob Skinner. No, Rob. This <laughs> is Rob. But uh, he uh, he works with all combat sports over at the training center, so he does wrestling, like all those oh, guys. Oh, okay. And, um, and he he tells us what to eat beforehand, what to eat afterhand, how to recover, and so he really helps out a lot too. A lot of, there's a lot of uh, training staff in the training center that help out a lot. That's cool, man. And you got to be, of course, you probably got to be open minded to go along with what these guys are saying. Ah, oh, yeah. But I mean, them being over there, it kind of gives them a lot of validation. Oh so, yeah, definitely. So, if they if they made it that far, they got to know something. Right. Um, <laughs> the big thing that uh, that with mm. with the guys that I was training, we or we train for fights and and like when we're getting competing in jujitsu matches, um, cardiovascular conditioning is one of my. It's a, I think is one of the biggest things and because even if you're not the greatest technician mm -hmm. if you can outlast it seems like if you can outlast the guy where his heart's going oh, yeah. you get you get him to that point and you're not there yet that you can overcome a, a man when, well, when you get him tired what's the old saying uh, fatigue make, makes cowards of us all <laughs> that's what? a great saying you know, it, 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 it's you know, true what, man yeah once you start tiring out you gotta take your heart 
you know, if you got the conditioning to to weather the storm, and you can make that second, third, fourth, fifth round, whatever it may be, and some, yeah, you a little, little braver at times. Do you ever feel that sometimes when you're in a fight? Because sometimes when I'm doing like a jujitsu match, or even just in class, just rolling around, like it'll be a guy that can normally just tap me out, you know, submit me with a, with some kind of a choke or arm lock or whatever. But if I can get him later on, like some of these mm -hmm. youngsters, because they'll put their put the yeah. energy out. If I can get him into the later on, and you can, you can get him sometimes. Um, yeah. Do you, can you feel it? Like when you're at, when you're in the ring and you're, can you see it in the guy or do you feel them? Like when you clinch oh, yeah. up with him or whatever? I remember. What's the uh, sign you look for? So my, my second fight, my second loss actually was, uh, was at state championships and I, I lost because I got really tired. And, okay. Uh, so you've, you've, you've been in that, yeah. had to have, you've been in that spot and felt the tiredness mm -hmm. and lost the fight? And so after that, I, uh. I've really focused on the conditioning. So I'm, I'm really one of the most conditioned super heavyweights. I believe that in my heart. Uh, I believe I'm one of the most conditioned heavyweights in the world. Um, but with that being said, I, I do look for, you, you just see subtle things, you know, they stop moving around so much. They, uh, they drop one hand more, they, they breathe heavier. You can see just in their eyes a little bit, just a little more distress. And uh, when that happens, I, it's just kind of like I could take them to a place that they've never been before, and so I really like being able to take them there and myself being there before. <laughs> that must be a great feeling, like when you're in a, a in a super important fight and uh, you're in a tough war, the guy. But then all of a sudden you feel yourself like this guy's done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you can do your do your thing on him. That's cool, man. It's, what an adventure, man. You guys, are, mm -hmm. what an adventure you guys' life is. A lot of fun, man. It's something. It's, it's really yeah. something else. An man. adventure only through hard work, though. Yeah. It's only through hard work. It's a tough adventure that most people will never get to experience. Yeah. I, I think like 10% of people out there will, 10% of all people will ever do something like you're doing. You know what I mean? Out of all the people out there, that's that's cool, man. So cool. Olympic trials. When are they? So the Olympic trials have actually already happened. Uh, okay, the trials already happened. Yeah, and um, you were talking about losses. I had I actually got uh, knocked out recently. Uh, in world championships against Uzbekistan, and that made me fifth in the world. But it was a it was a tough fight. I got hit with a, a good shot. And what um, kind of was it like a shot to the jaw, an uppercut? Or so something? What I had it? gotten rocked uh, from a temple shot, and I thought it was okay. I stumbled a little bit. I got back up, and I had been getting hit with some left straight left hands going back. So I didn't want to go back this time. So I decided, you know, I'm gonna come forward. I came with a hook, but when I threw the hook, I threw it a little too wild, and I got hit with a straight left. So what, kinda, what, it, what is it? It was when you're like throwing the hook and yeah, I was coming out for a hook, and he just right down the middle. And where was this guy from? Uh, Uzbekistan. Yes. Was it? Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. Say that yeah. ten times quick. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing was and stuff. There's a lot of controversy, and it was, it was, it was a wildfire on the internet because the guy's a pro. The guy's a pro, and he's one of those guys that came back, mm -hmm. and he had been fought in the world champs of championships before in the amateurs, and he came back for his country to fight again. So he had like ten fights as a pro. Uh, you know, he was gonna fight the next week again for a pro fight. Uh, so it was a, it was a big. I thought if man. you were, uh, like, you couldn't become a pro until after you were done with that the Olympics. It changed. changed because yeah. wasn't it before um, that you had to get out of the Olympics and those things before you could be a pro, yeah. right? Yeah, and you know, with the basketball, uh, bringing the, the pro athletes in, you know, all those things, it just started changing. Are yeah. they doing? Oh, they're yep. doing that now. Yeah, huh? basketball. Yeah, they have oh, the USA wow. team, Dream Team. Oh, back, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah I guess you're right. With that. So, you know, they're whole allowing them. Whole, 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 whole different game then. Whole different game at times. And, stuff. and so they're allowing uh, pros to come back in. In fact, I didn't even heard that Manny Pacquiao said he might want to go to the <laughs> Olympics because oh, <geez. laughs> he, uh, he wanted, uh, you know, he never did that. You know, they, uh, they always say, it's, I say, it's harder to get to the top in the amateurs than it is in the pros. In the pros, we get to pick fights. You know? And when you get to the very elite, right. the top, top, I mean, you got to fight who, who's there, the top guys. And stuff. But until you get to the very top and stuff, you kind of pick your path. In the amateurs, you fight everybody. Plus, and sometimes you don't even know who you're going against, right? Most amateur, of the time. You have no yeah. idea what the guy's done or anything like no, that? No, exactly. And stuff. So you go in there you know, uh, uh, blind about what his style is, and you just kind of pick it, up, pick it apart as you go. Sometimes the guy gets a jump on you, you only got three rounds in the amateurs. Oh, really? Three, oh, so three, rounds. three rounds in the amateurs, huh? Yeah, three three-minute rounds. And he pulls the first one out. There's a there's a stat. What's the stat? 80% of people? Yeah, 80% of people win the first round in the fight in amateur boxing. So, you know, he gives a uh, jump on you. You're not playing catch-up the whole time, and it makes it very difficult to win that fight. You know, the European style makes it very difficult. They're very uh, adapted at holding and, and winning the fight through their style and stuff. 
the United States, a lot of the Aiba reps uh, don't really care for that style too much. They want that distance. They want the little distance. Americans want to come in and bang. You know, so we got to change that style a little bit. But talk, talk about those. Break that down a little bit. What do you mean? <coughs> there's two the two different types of styles. So there's more of a distance where you're outside, and then more like brawling. Yeah, the United States. We like to get in inside body walk body shot stuff. But just until this year, it wasn't. They weren't really counting the body blows. They weren't really counting those. But this year, they're supposed to count those towards Olympics. Amateur, in the United States. They want the power. They want the knockouts. They want a, the a brawl. They want the pro style basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happens is in the amateurs in the United States, you train as an amateur to one day go pro. So your style is adapted to the pro style. In the, in the amateurs in Europe, there's no pro ranks. Like you, now there's a little more, it's open more, but there's no pro ranks back in the day. So you fight to win the Olympics. Yeah. So your style is a little different. Okay. That's crazy. Man. That's interesting. But uh, with with that being said, um, so I was medically exempted from the U, uh, from the Olympic trials, and so uh, because of that, I, I didn't get to partake in that. But since, uh, I was able to have a box off, so I had a box off with the number two guy. I beat him, and then me and the number one guy actually went to Bulgaria that one tournament. And uh, from Is that, that point on, yeah, recent deal? yeah, we had an evaluation, and uh, I had beat him out in the evaluation. He unfortunately lost the first night. And I won against India, and through that and in evaluation camp, uh, they chose me. Uh, they recently just chose on the big team, I think, uh, just like last week. So uh, it's kind of fresh news, but yeah, so I'm, I'm on the team. So what's the feeling like, man? It's, it's a great feeling. Man. It's it, got to be, dude. It's like uh, dreams becoming a reality, you know? I the remember being... becoming a reality. Yeah. That's, that's really something else, man. Well, so... You're taking off this week? I take off Wednesday, yeah. You take off Back Wednesday. To now, what about you, Dad? Are you just you stay here while you I go? I got to stay here, you know. Uh, man, how's that for you, knowing your son's going? Man. What, do you, what is it like every day, like waking up and going to bed, knowing that your son's over there doing this, but you can't be over there with him? You know, it, it, it's hard. We communicate a lot. You know, we communicate a lot. You guys use these things a lot? All the time. You know, it's, it's a cool FaceTime. thing about these. In fact, I, he made me switch over to, to uh, iPhone so we could do the FaceTime, you know, or over okay. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so... But when he's there and stuff, we communicate a lot, and he's like, hey, Pops, this is going on. What do you think? And we just kind of bounce things off each other. Like, well, what do you think? What do you, let's do this. Uh, so it makes it very difficult, especially when he's in that fight situation, and I'm watching him on on, on the Internet, like, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So is that how you have to watch? Because it's not on TV, right? Uh, they're not on TV, but some of these ones coming up will be. USA will, box. will we be able to watch or do we have to go online to uh, they'll be online on Argentina actually I'm not sure about Argentina because uh, NBC takes over everything when it's Olympic related and so uh, it might be televised on like a, on a smaller channel on the NBC app uh, yeah because they they're really like headstrong about that so USA Boxing can't really go live on some of those events because of the uh, the whole legal issues but um, so that'd probably be on NBC crazy how many uh Kids I mean, from the United States, how many kids are coming out of California? I think three. Our lightest weight class, um, his name is Anthony. Then we have Raheem and then myself. Raheem is a 178-pounder and then uh, myself to a 1+. Plus. And we also have a couple girls. So we have, uh, I know Andrea, she's from San Diego. Uh, so we have a, a pretty good group in California, uh, myself being the only one from the Central Valley. Um, but, yeah, pretty good, decent group this year. That's cool, man. And the camp, uh, we were talking about earlier, is there, are there two different uh, camps? Like, isn't there one in Colorado, and then is there another, is there another one, or is there... there... There's one in down, uh, there's a couple of camps. There's three. There's three, uh, one in San Diego, but that's the swimming. Okay, swimming that's what we're track. talking about. Swimming and track. <clears throat> so, okay, but for boxing, though. No. For boxing, it's in Colorado. Yeah, and then for winners... Because it's in, at the high elevation, right? Exactly. Talk about the high elevation a little bit, because that's one thing also that we did with our fighters uh, for the MMA. We thought it gave pretty good edges. We would go up into the park up oh, here, no. way up into the park above. They say once you get above uh, 5,000 feet, the water level changes in your lungs. <laughs> no, I know about that's that. Why, that's why it gets, becomes mm -hmm. hard to breathe. You I, know anything about that? From what I understand is, is the oxygen, uh, how much oxygen in the air changes. There's, there's less oxygen in the air. And it makes it yeah, it's thinner, and it just makes it hard for your body to utilize and put oxygen out of the air while it's coming in. 
you know, you, even, could, you could feel that. Uh, I remember the first, it, right? first time I got over there, I started breathing hard when I were walked upstairs. Were you tripping upstairs. out? Were you tripping out? Oh, it was insane. I remember <laughs> the first time we were 15, well, 15, 16, going. Uh, Young bucks, too. And uh, we, we were all, we went upstairs to do a, uh, a boxing session, and we had just started uh, doing the warm-up. And we had just met the coach, and so we were all trying really hard. And as soon as we run around the ring one time, we look at each other like, what the heck's going on? Like, we, we could barely breathe yeah, right now. Right. Or, like, we were all tired and everything like that. And then we... Uh, after after the warm up, one of the guys came up to us. He goes, "Hey, were you guys tired in the warm up?" We're like, "You were too." We we're like, "Oh my gosh, oh, thank yeah. you," because we all thought it was only us. But oh yeah, you could definitely feel it for about two weeks, and then after that, it takes, is that what it takes about two weeks to get used to it? Yeah, uh, first time you go up there, about two weeks. After you go, I've been living in uh, Colorado Springs. I have dual residency now. Uh, oh. You get <gasps> That's uh, nice. it'll take about two days, like two three days, to finally get acclimated again. So when is the when is the next uh, fight? Argentina. So that would, I think we leave to Argentina March 11th. And what's, the, what's the elevation in Argentina? It's in Buenos Aires. So it, they're usually higher. They usually pick places that have high elevation. Oh, to, they do? Yeah, at Connell's. But it, it'll definitely be less than Colorado, I, I believe. Damn, dude. That's crazy, man. Oh, yeah. And that's so, why they get into the chamber and start doing... Oh, uh, yeah, we have a... Uh, so what, what do you mean by that? So we have an acclimation chamber at the Olympic Training Center. Mm, I've heard about it, but I don't know, I'm not, I don't know what it is. Though. So it could dictate your temperature, the, the temperature, the oxygen level, the humidity, and the, uh, the elevation. So it, it really has, like, all four of them, and they'll, they'll go in there and they'll just crank everything up to the max, and I will just <laughs> we'll cry. But... Uh, yeah. Uh, I've gone in there and I've lost 10 pounds one time. It was a two-hour training session. I actually lost I lost 10 pounds. Water weight, just 10 pounds water yeah, weight. Yeah, just flushed out. So it was a lot. <laughs> That's crazy, man. So after your boxing. I mean, of course, you're trying to, you want to go pro. That's that's your main thing, right? Yeah. So um, pro pro fighting had never really been in a picture uh, for me. Actually, I thought I was gonna do my Olympic journey and then probably go to college, but uh, it's gone to the point where, I mean, I've put in so much time, so much effort, might as well get paid for it now, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, definitely. It's, uh, the, Olympic, the Olympics have always been my dream, and uh, the pros are just a bonus now. So I'm just trying to take as much as I can get. But, man, having a gold medal will be something else. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, you guys got the right attitude, man. I wish, I wish you guys all the best doing that. Um, the goal, now, Dad, you, with this gym, it's, this is a beautiful little gym here. Tulare is a quick growing town, mm -hmm. plus Central Valley is growing rapidly. Um, I know you like to help, you love helping kids out. Yep. You, you know, you kids off the street, people that can't afford boxing and things, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I'm sure you got people that pay. You probably got people that don't pay as well, right? Some that can't that's afford a, it. That, that, that's a kept secret. We, we, right, we, right, right. We scholarship. I, I know what you I mean. scholarship them. That's, that's, what, that's so, what I mean. you know, what happens is, uh, you know, the family will come out and they'll do some work for me. They'll, you know, I got trees back there to be trimmed, they'll chop weeds, whatever it may be and stuff to show they're giving back, you know. Nobody, we, nobody likes to get, just take, you know. As much as people just say, oh, give me, give me, people don't like that. It makes them feel uncomfortable, makes them feel, mm -hmm. feel insecure. They want to give back. So we'll do things, you know. Sometimes we'll have barbecues here for like 4th of July. We'll have the fairgrounds right there and we watch the barbe the fireworks and, and the family will cook something for everybody, you know. Everybody nice. gives something and, and we work with together. So some people are scholarship in. That's cool, man. A lot of people aren't willing to do that. You know what I mean? A lot of people yeah. out there aren't willing to do that. Yeah, you know, up until probably about three years ago, uh, we never charged. Never charged uh, a penny. But, you know, lights need to be kept on. Uh, you know, yeah. gloves need to be purchased, all those things. And, and uh, you know, it just helps out the whole thing. That's cool, man. Good people right here for the community, guys. Good people for the community. And you MMA guys that are out there, all, you know, all these, all of our MMA gyms, I, I know all the local coaches and everything, there's all these so-called boxing coaches. There's only a few real ones, though, in the in the Valley that have, you know what I mean, that have really mm -hmm. been around. I mean, when I say real, you know, that have really done that what you guys have done. Um, do you guys, if an MMA guy or a kickboxer, because in kickboxing, one of the weaknesses in, in Muay Thai, mm -hmm. Kickboxing is the hands, like the elbows and the knees and the and the leg kicks. They're they're really legit, but what <coughs> they're missing are the hands. Yeah. The boxing, I mean the uh, blocking mm -hmm. and the hand part. Do you guys ever work with kickboxers or MMA guys? Do you ever get them come in here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, a lot of them. Actually, at the moment we have a, maybe about six, seven kids who wrestle, and we have a uh, uh, Jonathan uh, Moskowitz. Uh, he's a uh, he just won his uh, last fight in MMA. Um, 
he's thinking about entering the Golden Gloves tournament. So we've All been right. working a lot on, on the hands, like you said, the hands a lot, a lot of footwork, a lot of hands. So so yeah, well, there's there's a lot of kickboxers and wrestlers that come in here. And uh, what are you guys out. ever getting uh, jujitsu guys come in here that want to pick up some hand work? Yeah, no, walk open everybody. Are they open? Are they open, guys open with it when they come in here? Like, hey, I've been doing jujitsu <coughs> for so long or whatnot. Most of the guys who show up, who have that 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 skill set, are willing. They show up because they're willing to learn. They want right, to, right. you know. Some guys are walking through here and, and I say, hey, you want to train? No, I do this. <laughs> yeah, you know, I do this skill set. I do this uh, sport or whatever. Okay, hey, cool. But well, we do boxing here, you know. Uh, so we'll, we'll work with anybody, you know. Once again, are you coachable? Yeah, you know, don't waste my time. Don't waste everybody else's time and energy here and stuff. You come in, and you're gonna tell me how to how to throw a punch. We're coming to see, see me for right. for the advice. Right, okay, right. so take what we give. Just don't kick the bag. Just don't kick the bag. <laughs> okay, I almost did it too. Like, you know what? These guys probably won't appreciate it if I kick the bag, even though my kicks suck. <laughs> what if it's just an old dude like me that wants to just uh, come in just for the workout? Perfect. We'll take my. Uh, Eight years old and up, I'll take everybody. You know, you know, just sign a waiver says you won't pass that on me. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do the physical. That's cool, man. Mm. That, that's that's really something else. You guys, like I said before, I'll say it again. Your guys' uh, life experience. This is a, a true adventure that most people don't get. Um, sp sponsors. Uh, I want you guys to. Uh, do you have any sponsors or anything you want to give a shout out to? Like people that people that you want to thank because. Uh, our podcast we're going out worldwide and, mm -hmm. and we want to give you guys props and we want you, what our hope for you guys when we come to a gym like this is that you do what you do and then we'll be able to promote your school and then when you go and get that gold and come back you know later on down the road people will be able to, to look back at these type of things and see what you came out of uh, mm -hmm. is there anybody out there you want to you want to give some thanks to i mean you got your, your main man right here oh yeah i want to say thanks to all my coaches all my uh all my teachers my dad and everybody i want to give a shout out to early mart i just early mart middle school i just went out there today and talked to some of the kids amazing group of people i went there last year uh palo verde my old middle school um they're they're amazing people i went out there again and it's real fun to go back and see all your old teachers um and see all the, all these kids that uh, you know, you were there one day. You were, you were there uh, a while back, and so you know what they're kind of going through. You know where they're at, and uh, you know where they can be. So, I, I for the sponsors, you know, the community is great. You know, I I have a hard time uh, asking for the money. You know, a lot of times I take out to my dad and reach my pocket and pull out some money and help out. You know. Auto don't waste time. We got Chris on any time. We didn't thank them. So I can't work the mitts very much anymore. Okay, my knees and my shoulders are gone. Thanks to this guy, you know. <laughs> Auto and Chris work the mitts and stuff. They come in, they help out, and they, they coach for me, you know. And they come through, and I just kind of, I'm kind of selfish that way. I kind of look at them. That's a good one. Yeah. Bring them over here. I want to talk to them. That's, uh, let me talk to them over here, you know. This will focus on these two guys and stuff. So I get to kind of sit back. You're good at seeing it. You can spot them out. <clears throat> I can see a lot of guys saying, that one's gonna be something right there, you know. You know, now it depends on what they, how far they want to take it themselves and the tenacity right, right. they have. But I see the athletic ability in them, and, the, and you know that little fire in their eyes. Uh, but you know, we're here. I mean, we're here for the community. Uh, like I said, we just started charging about three years ago. Twenty dollars a month for individual gym fee. Ten dollars second person if you have two kids in the family. If you have a third kid in the family or mom or dad, five dollars. Fourth. And and more, it's free. Okay, so Can't yeah. Can't beat that, guys. What yeah. about just if uh, for like single classes? Say a guy doesn't pay uh, a monthly, uh -huh. but he wants to stop in for for a class here and there. And talk, you know, come through, and, and we like the community to come through and, and talk to the kids. You know, hey, what's hey, good job, Steve, doing a good job. Yeah, because how we get the validation and stuff. A lot of time, the kids we have in this group, they don't get that validation from people in the community. You know, they may not see somebody like you uh, or somebody, you know, like a teacher or. a Police officers coming through, and I ask them to come through all the time just to give these kids validation and stuff. So you come through and say, "Good job, help us out, buy some water, uh, some water for the kid." The kid can't afford to to you know get his tennis shoes uh, laced up or something. Buy him some shoe laces. That's what we're looking for. Look at community effort. You know, it, it's an old corny mm -hmm. saying, but it takes community, it takes a village. I mean, it takes us all together and everything to help make these kids a champ. And once again, it doesn't matter. I'm not talking about a world champion that goes to the Olympics and does like this guy's doing and one day be Dante Wilder. I'm talking about a kid that doesn't get locked up. 
kid that graduates from high school, a kid that 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 understands that his hands are weapons and, and not going to beat on 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 their spouse or and, you know, those are winners for me. Yep, that's what I'm talking about right there, man. That's we're, guys, we're all we're all here to help one another, man. It's that's what the thing is. We're all you know we're all put on this earth to help help one another. Even though we're fighting and competing against each other in these competitions cage fights, ring, whatever mm-hmm. it is, wrestling, you know what I mean? Hel- competition's healthy. Yep. Yeah. And uh, before we <clears throat> shut this down, uh, something real big to me in, in competition is when you go against another man or it's team versus team is the respect that you show that man after, man or woman, <clears throat> after, whether you win or lose, uh, how you act to the guy afterwards. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Talk about that for a sec. You know, there's a saying, and in, in, I think it's a Shakespearean saying, he who bleeds with me today is my brother. Yeah. He who bleeds with me today is my brother. Yeah. He's got enough guts, enough balls, we would say, to get in the ring of me and expect, you know, not fighting dirty, not, but it's man on man, okay? I think a lot of times society, I, it's unfortunate, we emasculate men. You can't use your hands. You can't be aggressive. You can't be violent. You can't, <clears throat> you know, this is a place you can do all those things that are socially acceptable, and we want you to be a, a killer in here. Once you, but outside this ring, I want you to take that down a notch, relax, be humble, be nice, and some people can say, that's a good guy. There you have it right there, guys. That's that's good stuff, man. That's good stuff. To, those are life life lessons right there. You know what I mean? And the community, man, I'm seeing the valley is uh, going downhill a lot with the drug use and the, the kids not bad. being active, man. Like, uh, the, I mean, these things are great pieces of they're great devices and mm-hmm. this technology is great and everything but most kids nowadays are just staying inside and it's a big thing I, I talk about it all the time you guys are probably sick of hearing me talk about it but kids they're not getting outside yeah. anymore man there's you guys are staying everybody's staying in on these devices and these devices are they're rapidly advancing yeah. and dude you got to get off the couch you need to mm-hmm. get outside it doesn't have to be boxing no doesn't have to be boxing it's got, you got to get out and do something, though. An organized sport that has some, some oversight to it is great. And so mm-hmm. you come here and have kids come in and hang out. You know, it's hard to put your kids out in the front yard nowadays. Oh, dude, it's, I was just, <laughs> it's, it's difficult, dangerous, I, man. Hey, dangerous. It's hard. It's dangerous. Oh, go play in the front. Go play outside. You can't do it. You don't know if they're coming home sometimes, you know? Nope. So we got a place that's organized. They have coaches here. You got to check in, check out. We know who comes, who leaves, all those things and stuff. So it's a safe spot to be, and you know, and you can be productive. That's awesome, man. Everything, everything I heard right here today, I love, man. It's good, good stuff. If I, if I could, I'm sorry. I want to no, give you can, one, you one, more, can, one more shout out to uh, Coach Matt from VR from V Fit. Uh, he's he's really helped me out a lot. I mean, uh, he's one of our uh, strength conditioning coaches. And uh, V Fit is that here in Tulare? Yeah, it's right right down the street. So yeah, give a props to the V Fit. Yeah, so he's a he's a really good guy. Uh, is that full body conditioning? It's a strength conditioning. So okay. uh, he he really puts it on you on the weights and the, uh, a, like a conditioned strength. It, and it's really something different. I really appreciate all of everything he's done for me. A lot of explosive movements. A lot of. Uh, Bounding, jumping, leaping, throwing things, and just you know, yeah. it's over body, all body workout to get some real good shape. Something different, so that's cool, man. That's cool. Well, guys, you have it right there. We're once again, we're at 1331? 1331 South O Street, South of Fairgrounds, Tulare, mm-hmm. California, guys. Uh, all you local guys know where it's at, but everybody else out there in the world, keep your eye on the Central Valley if you haven't already. We're doing big things out here in the yep. Central Valley, right. middle yeah. of California. Ain't really much else to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's not. There's not. Um, guys, keep an eye on our podcast. We're growing rapidly. Now we're doing Skype interviews. Uh, we got big things Big things coming up. We got some really popular guests coming up. I'm, I'm really excited in this next month with the things that, that me and the, the podcast crew are doing. Uh, if you guys are into advertising, uh, we got all the deals on advertising. Uh, the next fights that are coming up, 559 Fights, uh, all the MMA shows, we're, we're going to be advertising all over. So if you want to get an advertisement spot on our videos, on the podcast show, uh, on the Inside the Dojo show, on anything that we're doing, you can contact tag myself, Tom Owens, uh, Archie Tovar, Xavier Ortega, or just go to MMAFightPass.com. Hey, okay, don't, let me give, don't let, me, let me forget to get a shout out to Mike Saroyan, one of my coaches, and Chris Compos, man. These guys... And Aldo right here, man. We can't do it without yes. these guys, man. You know. Hey, man, you can't do it without coaches like you. Yep. Appreciate no, you guys. Thanks. Thank you, Coach, and uh, thank you for having us on, on your podcast. Oh, dude, this is a tremendous honor, man. Uh, you you coaches that are – come up, walk around real quick over here. Come on in. Because you know what? Time flies by so quick, 
and our younger generation are going to look back at this stuff. That's why we're where we're doing this. Uh, coach, coaches, introduce yourself. My name is Christopher Campos. My name is Mike Soroyan. Soroyan, nice to meet you guys. Hey, without guys like this, guys, these kids, man, like you, you just can't do it. You know can't do I mean? it, man. You can't oh. do it. When, There's only one of me and a lot of them. <laughs> yep, yep. And that's great, man. Thank you guys for helping the community, and thanks for for working with these young kids and putting time into these young, younger generation, man. This gym, through the coach, they, they uh, teach these kids to, from the heart, from the heart, and it's, they learn well. And you don't get that uh, too much nowadays from the heart. That's awesome, man. Uh, this has been a great honor, guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Coach. Uh, I, I met you out of the blue, man. It was, uh, <laughs> and, and you got back to me right away. No problem, man. Always good. Yeah. Always good people. Yep, we're we're good people that just want to help each other, man. We, that's what it's all about. We're all about helping each other, respect one another, guys. Train with everybody. That's our lo that's our you know what I mean. Something we, we like to say a lot. Have your loyalty at a gym, but it's okay to go out and train with other people. Mm -hmm. You yep. ever go out and train? You know what I mean. Get some training with other coaches besides well, the facilities. The Olympic training center coaches, you know. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. So they definitely. they have a bunch of volunteer coaches that come in too, and so you always get a. Um, a nice look about, about the other things. You you keep what you like and you leave the rest, you know? That's cool, man. Yeah, we get other uh, gyms who come out here for sparring also, so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah you guys, uh, real quick before we start, because uh, we did Ruben Quailar, was that his Quailar. Mm -hmm. Quailar, yeah, we did it inside the dojo in his garage mm -hmm. recently. Because mm -hmm. uh, we're going, guys, we're going to anywhere where there's a good coach, you know what yeah. I mean? And uh, yeah, he had nothing but great things to say about you. And we went inside his garage and he taught us a couple things. And he had he had a wall full of photos, and he uh, he broke it down, but he talked about you a lot. So yeah, so yeah, guys, uh, now's the part where uh, you you teach me a little something. You got on, you, on man. The mitts, we got you. I'll hit the focus mitts a little bit. Okay. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thank you. Everybody out there live, thank you for tuning in.